Hello there, Codemaker4 here. This is Advent of Code. It's an Advent calendar of coding challenges. And uh, in this video, I'm going to show you how I solved challenge one. Here is the explanation. First is an introduction of the story, kind of, of Advent of Code. Um, and here there's a story for the first puzzle. And then there's uh, there's a part two. every So every day for 25 days until the 25th of December, there's going to be two puzzles. So 50 puzzles in total. Uh, for each day, there's an easy puzzle, uh, which is usually part one, and a hard puzzle, part two. And throughout the month of December, these puzzles are going to get harder and harder. So each day's first puzzle is going to be harder than the day before. And for each day, the second puzzle is quite a bit harder than the first one. And usually they build upon each other. Um, so now it's your time. Solve the puzzles if you haven't already. So pause the video, come back later. If you have already solved the puzzle, let's do a quick recap of what we need to do. So there are these uh, launch codes and we need to find the first and last digit of each launch code, um, combine them together into a number for every line in the input. And then we take all of these numbers and add them together. Of course, the joke being that puzzle input is a thousand lines long. So you could do this by hand. But the idea of Advent of Code is that you create some programs for it. I do everything in C because it's a bit of a more clean language. There's no like um, weird functions that I'm importing. This is going to be very close to what the computer is like actually doing. So there's lots of things here for which I could import libraries. But the, the fun is that you have to make all of these algorithms yourself. And especially in the later challenges, um, the naive solution is just going to be ridiculously slow. Um, so you even have to do some optimizations. So what I do is uh, I take each, each of these lines and um, need to find the first and last digit. So I made a function. First, I made a function to check if a single character is a digit. And then I made functions first digit and last digit, which just takes a string and returns the integer of the first or last digit. So it, it, it finds it and converts it to an actual number that we can do maths with. Um, how this is implemented in C is that we, of course, uh, for first digit, we just take the string, convert it to a point of our character. Not really necessary. I only did this for like readability. Um, and until that character is null, we're going to check if it's a digit. And if it's not equal to negative one, which is what a digit does if it can't, if it's not a digit. So if it's not not a digit, as in it's a digit, we're going to just going to like return that. Um, else, we're just going to go to the next character. That's just some pointer math here. Um, and if we can't find anything, because this while loop gets to the string terminator before it finds, before it returns a digit, we just return negative one as an error code. Last digit is pretty similar, but I said C starts at the end of the string and we decrement it each time because again, pointer math is fun. Um, and we just check if it, we aren't going getting to before the start of the string. And then here we are just reading every single line for each line of the input. Uh, we're taking the first digit multiplied by 10, then add the second digit. So that's how you can like convert it to a two digit number and have to be an actual integer the computer can do math with. Um, add it to a sum and then print the sum. That's it. Very easy. Then comes part two, um, where it turns out that actually there's also, in, in the same input, there's also like spelled out digits, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. No zero. Um, I believe that that was just a choice the makers of the puzzle made that to, to not include zero. So we get a new example. So two, one, nine should now become 29. You do have to watch out because numbers can overlap. Like here, one and eight share an E. So to get the first digits, you need to use kind of start searching from the, from the left. And which is not really shown in the examples, but is important for the last digit. We also have to search from the right, which sounds like it's really going to be hard, but there is a way of solving searching from the left in a way that also handles digits overlapping if it starts from the right. So yeah, let's uh, see how this works. Of course, we have digit, first digit, last digit from the previous solution. Then I made this function is prefix, which is takes two string, a prefix and a string, and it tests if string starts with prefix. So as soon as it runs into a character that is in prefix, but is not in string, 
it's going to say no. But if we get to the end of this loop, and we've ended the loop because uh, we've reached the end of prefix, and we're going to return a 1. If we reach the end of string but did not reach the end of prefix, it means, it means that the prefix was longer than the string, which means that the, the prefix can't possibly be in the string. And then what I do is, if there's a prefix, so uh, again, I just do this uh, pointer math to just basically remove the first character from the string. And we send like the, everything that's left over from that line that we're testing, I send that to is prefix. And we're essentially just to essentially just kind of test if this not digit is spelled starting at a specific index. And if so, we replace the first character of that with set digits. Uh, by just doing some character math here. So here we're taking the character ASCII character 1 and we're adding i to it. i is zero index because I have this zero indexed array of numbers that starts with 1. It's a bit messy, I know. I Really, I should have just added zero in here. Um, but zero is not in the, t in the test, so it's like ever so slightly faster if I do it like this. So we essentially just replace all of that, which will... will make this result and uh, this is going to work perfectly fine because the first character the first digit is a one last digit is an eight if there were any like normal digits remaining um uh, replace nums isn't going to mess with any of that because it there's no digits in these numbers so what's the performance of this because there's one two three four nested loops that seems pretty terrible yeah it's not that it's actually only big O of n, not big O of n to the hypercube. No, no, no. So is prefix, let's just start with that. The performance of that is equal to the minimum length of each of these strings. And although string can be very long, prefix is going to be at most five because these are defined in our program. So its prefix is at most going to do five operations. And this loop only goes to nine. So we only do at most nine times five operations, which is... 45. So at most 45 operations. And really these two while loops, it's a nested while loop, but we're still only doing these 45 operations for each character. Um, it's like if you put more characters on over less lines, um, that, that doesn't change the performance of everything. So this is big O of 45 times the amount of characters, which is the same of big O of N. So the performance in how it scales is probably as good as it gets, because no matter what, you're going to have to loop over every single character in the string, in the input. Um, are there ways to improve this? Probably I could use some sort of binary search tree or some different structure for finding these digits. But I, I don't think that really helps a lot. In fact, the overhead of that might easily nullify the performance gains. So this can probably be optimized, but not a lot. And I don't think you can beat big O of N here. Again, these challenges are relatively easy. It's going to get harder over time. Subscribe to stay tuned. Um, all of the source code here is going to be on GitHub. Link is in the description. Uh, link to my Discord service in the description as well. Every Saturday and Sunday evenings, I live stream on twitch.tv slash codemaker4. Go join me there. Anyways, I'm Code Breaker 4. I still don't have an outro. Bye.